I was really looking forward to seeing you that day and hanging out in Albuquerque and seeing your new car. First of all, you show up late. Oh, I left a phone message. Well, you know, I was outside waiting for you. Then you get me into town and you don't even know how to drive the car to where we're going. And we go on this wild goose chase and I don't dare say a thing because the last thing I can do is correct you when you're driving a vehicle. So we wasted a tremendous amount of time going back and forth across the city while you got more and more aggravated and agitated instead of just asking for help and directions. And then you started in on me, accusing me of yapping for trying to speak real dismissive treating me very second class and then you start in about the way you can gunny sack resentments i didn't pay you for the trailer and the truck for three months i was trying to save money to get out people had sent donations and i thought if i can hold off on the payments for three months then i can get the hell out of here and get some place but i can't find any place i can afford to live I don't know if you remember this, but the original deal was you were going to go out there, scout around, and we were going to get a place together. Do you remember that? No. And in the meantime, I'm stuck with having to work on the blog for your station and a Facebook page for your station while you tell me I should have this and that kind of smartphone so I would have broadcast quality voice recording through my smartphone absolutely no comprehension that there's not going to be a smartphone and it wouldn't work out here anyway there are no cell phone towers and how would i pay for it so i can't do radio broadcasting out here are you kidding i live in a travel trailer on a freeway it's noisy all the damn time i've got that nutcase next door with those screaming barking dogs i can't make a recording studio out of this you ragged me for withholding those payments for three months. Well, you got paid, and I explained why. So I get to do the Facebook page and the announcements and press releases for the blog that I made for the station. All about all kinds of fun things going out and out there and interesting and useful political work that I could be doing with Native American people and queer people and women's groups and working at the radio station where there's a soundproof recording studio where I could produce news that I could sell. So I get to hear all about all the stuff I'm missing and how I can't participate and you have no idea how demoralizing that is. I'm out here in this redneck white trash bullshit and can't do a darn thing except what I do on the internet. Can't earn a living, can't participate, can't inform people. And then you throw up the fact that the bathroom caught fire. Do you remember what happened the night before the bathroom caught fire? You beat me in the head. And the results of that were that for months I couldn't hear right, I was dizzy, I couldn't see well. You don't remember that part, do you? I had no sleep that night. You know, a person without brain injuries could have forgotten and left that candle burning in the bathroom. And you know, by the time you were awake, I'd gone to the hardware store and the big box store and gotten cleaning supplies and cleaned the entire bathroom on no sleep and was prepping it to repaint that wall. By the same time the next day that fire was, there was no evidence of that fire. When you were trying to go to school and work, you know, I helped you with your job. I helped you with your studies and research i helped you with your projects for your classes later on you'd say oh i didn't really help you that much you never had to wash out a pair of your crusty underwear you pretty much didn't have to cook you didn't have to wash dishes i did almost all the work there so that you would be free to work your job and finish your bachelor's degree i didn't even get to go to graduation with you because your abusive cruel sister was there the one who treated me like garbage because i was worried about you that first christmas that we should have been together and you went off to go get that surgery and have your face peeled off and I was left here to find out what the surgical procedure was and how much danger you'd really put yourself in and your sister treated me like I was crazy because I was worried about you and didn't know why you weren't answering your phone and so your graduation I didn't get to go well I didn't get to go with you I didn't get to be with you at all I had to be way on the other side of the stadium alone didn't even meet up with me afterward went out with that sister and you know how cruel she is she's been cruel to you too so you get me in the car there in albuquerque and you start in about how you don't expect to ever get paid back for the trailer and, and the truck and yet you don't know how much they cost when i say how much would it cost to settle it you said thirty five hundred dollars well you know what the trailer was twenty five hundred and the truck was nine hundred so you do the math even with interest rates i don't owe you any thirty five hundred dollars 
And I was made homeless, what, three, four times since I've gotten this trailer? And no, I don't still have my paperwork. And yes, I do have brain injuries. And no, I don't know how much I owe. And you do, and you won't tell me. So I haven't answered my email on the account where you email me in a month. Because I'm afraid of how I'll feel when I see email from you. And no, I haven't done my job for the station in a month. Because I'm demoralized, and I'm angry, and I'm depressed, and I just needed a break from it. But now it's all piled up. I have bet I've got 5,000 emails in that e inbox. And came down here in a $25,000 car. There's a four-acre piece of property with a house on it for $12,000 out here. If I could have made payments per month, but I didn't even approach you about it. Showed off your car. Wagging your smartphone in my face. You're doing really well, and I helped you. And you can't look, wait for an opportunity to let me know how second class I am. You send me links by email. You don't even say, please post this. You, no explanation. Just random links. I don't know what you want me to do with them. You're angry if I telephone. You're angry if I email. I don't have time to read that. I don't have time to talk to you. The same crap you put me through when we were living together for three and a half years when I had to be quiet all the time because you were always either doing something for school or something for work and you couldn't bother to speak to me. And then a month after you graduated, pull that. I'm not happy. I'm moving out after I spent three and a half years investing in your future. Now I'm living in squalor and you're driving a $25,000 Prius. So yeah, somehow this week I'm going to screw up the courage and I'm going to open up that email and I'm going to weed through it because it's the tortures of Tantalus because I get emails now from the radio producers and know I can't do anything. I get press releases about stuff going on out there where you are that I can't be part of. Somehow I've got to work up the courage because all it's doing by my pretending it's not there is piling up and going to make it worse on me. Your hate, your selfishness, the way you try to make it my fault that you're so mean to me, they're poison to me. You got me in that car and treated me like that and I can't tell you how sick I was. Literally, literally sick. My mind couldn't work right. I was trying not to vomit. I was in the middle of a major anxiety attack, blacking out, dissociating, while you harangued and harassed and bullied me. Your know, mom used to drive me to school and beat me with her fist on the freeway. And I'd sit there and look at the door handle and decide which would hurt worse, the beatings or jumping out into the freeway. And you know that story, but you don't care. You don't even care about this. I just had to get some of the poison out of my system. Because I've sat here for a month depressed and on the verge of tears. Because the last time I was with you in Albuquerque made me so sick. And you even had the nerve to say, Well, I wouldn't really say that when we get together I have a good time. Right between the eyes. So you were pretending like you were my friend and couldn't wait to unload that on me as another weapon to let me know how worthless I was. For somebody who doesn't have any feelings, you sure know how to hurt people. And I'm stuck with you and I've got to do this work and I've got to keep paying you back. Or you'll strand me like you did out in, when I was out in Fort Sumner. And you went all the way out there, take that truck out from under me. Left me out there with no vehicle. 160 miles round trip for groceries and didn't care. Wouldn't put it past you to come out here and steal this trailer out from under me and the truck. And leave me with nothing and my animals dead. I wouldn't put it past you. You're very cold-blooded. There, it's said.